So I could drop down, but I could also get this. Does this take me anywhere, though? <laughs> nah, I still gotta drop down. They'll let anyone into this district. Are you talking about me? As good as fresh. <laughs> Bits and fish. I don't speak to strangers. Okay. Uh, I think on those green plates, it's just a bunch of rats. Leave me alone. Does everybody hate me just because of what I'm wearing, or...? This is kind of a strange outfit. A little suspicious. Hmm. Bunch of... pile of... cans in a blue crate. That wasn't where we just were, was it? You think you've got the budget? Oh, it is, isn't it? Now that outfit is totally out of style. <laughs> Outfit's out of style, okay. It is the outfit they're reacting to. Uh, that's not the same one we just saw. No, this one doesn't have pigeons and it's got it, uh... The stash is off to the side and there really is no off to the side, it's just in the water. Technology Hunt Glove. The Hunt Glove is the favorite weapon of the Memory Hunters, a small band of criminals who emerged in the late 2060s and perfected the art of stealing memories from other people. Many debates and theories persist regarding the origin and mastery of this particular tool. The Memory Hunters, or Mem Hunters, weapon of choice, the Hunt Glove allows them to break through the sense and security mechanisms of their target undetected. The glove establishes brief but deep contact with the electronic matrix containing the victim's digitized memories, enabling them to steal memories. However, memorial theft requires more than just a hunt glove. Special cerebral attributes are required to control it, without which any theft would be impossible. The user is as important as the tool itself, and it is estimated that fewer than 1 in 10,000 people have the skills required to be a memory hunter. Kid, Kid Xmas, one of the most famous, famous reformed mem hunters, revealed in his Xmas show that a true memory hunter can calibrate and personalize his hunt glove to create a unique tool to match his cerebral profile. Kid reckons that the level of personalization will often decide the outcome in a duel between two memory hunters. Okay, that sounds like a hint that we're going to be dueling another memory hunter. But the true origin of of the hunt gloves remains obscure and the mystery has given rise to numerous rumors. What seems beyond any doubt is that the manufacture of these objects, truly technological gems, is way beyond the normal scope of the criminal fraternity. Some say it was the work of a renegade from the memorized research units, and that the tool, originally designed by and for intelligence and counter-espionage agencies, was leaked into the criminal underworld. The popular myth of a single creator of the glove hidden away in a secret lab is most likely part of the urban folklore in the age of the Sensen. Ah, here it is. You're cute, but I'm busy. What you brush your hair with? A grenade? <laughs> what you brush your hair with a grenade? Okay, that's a pretty good one. I think I'd rather meet your sister. I'm not interested. I tell you, I can't believe Steve didn't give me that bonus. Stop. Bragging it, man. Every time I see you, you're complaining about something. You're lucky to have the job. 
I know I'm lucky it's to have a true. job, but I work hard. Hey, hey, did you get the vacations? Okay, yes, I got the vacations. And you got the card for the canteen? I got the card, too, but that's not the point. I should have got that bonus. What time do you come in to work? I come in on time to work. 10 o'clock, right? 10 o'clock. What time do you leave work? I leave, I leave work at 6. That's your answer. I mean, I never leave work before 10 at night. Now, admittedly, I don't come in until 11, but... Yeah, but you, you, you work different times to me. You work the weekend sometimes, too, right? I know it's not the same day. Yeah, but I love... I love being here. Look at this office I got. Look at a view I got. Look at the friends I got out there. Come on, man. It's not true. Don't be dumb. Stop being negative, son. Well, no. I, what I gotta ask you is this. Why do you think... It's not true. You know better I than swear it. Why do you think Steve did not give me that bonus? Why don't you ask Steve? I... D what do you think? I'm gonna go and say, Hey, Steve, man. You didn't give me the... Of course I'm not gonna ask him. He's my boss. Got a million me. variables, Saul. How the hell do I know why you didn't? You know what I think? You know what I think? I'm gonna tell you the truth. It's I think true. I that he kept some of the bonuses for himself. You're a lying SOB, man. He doesn't do that kind of thing. What? How, how do you know? How do you know? I know Steve pretty good. That's the end of the conversation? That had gone on for so long, I... I thought it was going to have a bigger end. Anticlimactic. Also, God, I wish the secondary conversations had subtitles as well, even if the subtitles are way too small. But, uh, yeah, subtitles in this game are pretty bad. Too small and don't exist for anything but main story stuff, I guess. Is it this? Yeah, Edge, the founder of errorism. Initially considered merely another radical agitator, the mysterious Edge quickly became the leader of the most dangerous criminal organization in the Sensen era. His credo, to use the technology he denounced to expose its lethal dangers. He remains the only errorist still at large after the dismantling of his movement. Founder and leader of the errorists, Edge is the most mysterious and media-savvy celebrity in Neo-Paris. The Sabre Force has pursued him relentlessly for years, yet he eludes capture and continues to broadcast public messages to justify his actions. Edge continues to incite popular hatred for what he calls criminal amnesia, even though his fellow members have been arrested and his organization has been dismantled. Many theories abound regarding the true identity of the heiress leader. It's widely believed he is a climate refugee operating from a mobile HQ outside the Marifarique. This accounts for why he was the only member to avoid the wave of arrests ordered against his movement. Since its formation in 2068, the movement has mainly carried out data theft, piracy, and material sabotage for propaganda purposes. Edge and his agents were blamed for the death of Captain Frank Forlan, the Sabre Force commander, who died under suspicious circumstances. Forlan's death prompted the hunt and arrest of all the heiress members. Only Edge, the founder, has evaded the dragnet that called an abrupt halt to the organization's activities. Another time, perhaps. It's not true. I swear it. one more what what just happened sounds like someone got dunked
What was that? What was that thing? That's a good sign, sister. With time, other memories will come back. You're almost there. Follow Tommy's flying drones to his bar. Ooh, brain box delivery. Oh, my button to move faster along ledges. Huh. Give me a memory, man. Anything will do. Just need a fix. My last one. And I'll Your stop. memory's unraveling. It's loosening a second-hand cyber orgasm. You're two steps away from pregnancy. Anything, man. I just want to remember something happy. Nice shot, Cottage. Oh. That's a problem. Oh, it's timed. Okay. I didn't stop. Ooh, I love the checkpoints that are like right before the thing that happened. That's very, very nice. Ha. Don't stop, ha. Stop. Well, no going back. You know, the leaky brain bar or whatever the place is, it might get more customers if it was easier to access. Oh, that's satisfying. Ooh. We can go down or up. Uh, probably supposed to go up, I assume. So let's go down. Maybe there's extra stuff down here. Aha! Uh -huh. First memorial accident. Despite the gravity of the incident, the media provided little coverage on what became known as the Nanjing HP4 incident. However, this appears to be the first proven case of a large scale memorial accident, demonstrating that contrary to what the official statements from Memorize would have us believe, Sensen technology is far from safe. The authorities have vehemently, uh, vehemently denied the extent of the risk to the population posed by the artifacts of digital memory. The power of the sense in, in the economy is now clearly so great that any minor criticisms are ignored by our leaders and the news channels, except when they are dismissed with cynical contempt. The Nanjing HP4 incident is evidence of this policy of silence and treacherous compromise. Towards the end of the 2070s, independent overseers reported a serious memorial accident in China in the town of Nanjing, Jiangsu province. It is still difficult to ascertain the precise date of this dramatic incident, but the catastrophe resulted in a copy of the memory bank of Psychiatric Hospital No. 4 in the Nanjing suburbs being released into a civilian memory bank. No field studies have yet been carried out to our knowledge, but an estimated 190,000 citizens were contaminated 
by pathological memories. The local authorities implemented an emergency wiping program which was supposed to have cured 97% of the victims. This glib estimate is unconvincing as confirmed by the sharp rise in suicides and crimes recorded in the region. We would probably have never been reminded of this tragedy were it not for the serious health consequences visible throughout the town of Nanjing and the number of victims, which made any attempts at a cover-up impossible. When questioned, the memorized officials blamed the accident on the improper use of the memory-saving technology by a Chinese company that didn't own a legal license to operate large-scale memory copying. The memorized press release stated the appalling consequences of a technological deterioration and used the opportunity to reassure users that its source products were completely safe. What the Nanjing HP4 case does prove is that catastrophic memory accidents are possible. Despite their reassuring press releases, Memorize is risking the mental health of the global population in ways that could have terrible consequences for us all. Contrary to what the company would like us to believe, Memorize is not a philanthropic enterprise, but an extremely powerful multinational that has the most extensive and insidious intel on data mining and individual profiling imaginable. It is now time to remember. The leaking brain. Shut up! Oh, headache Tommy over there. Uh, this one is at a stall that has a view of like a pink, uh, not pink, yellow robot head? Where's that? Oh, that's the robot head. I don't know exactly where it was taken from, though. More of an extreme angle, more like from this side. Oh, yeah, there it is. Fifth sat patch collected adds an extra chunk to your health gauge. Nice. Stupid mem junkie. I've got nothing for you. No point in trying to go to random stalls. Nobody wants to deal with me. Johnny wants my heart for Christmas. You know, you know that, huh, Tommy? You're safe here, Bob. Don't sweat it. Whoa, B! Edge did it! <laughs> Come here, sweetheart! Neilan, it seems like a lifetime. I'm sorry. I have no memory of you. You really can't remember this pretty boy face of mine? I'm sorry. Hell. Well, we all lost bits and pieces in the war. But you're free, sweetheart. That's what counts. I guess. Feels like I'm lost. First things first, sister. Let's get you out of those straps. Over there, it's yours. I rescued it from your safe house, along with your fancy combat skin. Lucky thing they caught you on a day off.
Now this is a hundred percent Nilin. Way above the model I used to use. It's beyond me, sister. You're the only one who can use it. What did they do to you? Down there, in La Bastille. Unlike you, I had to stay for the whole program. Well then, let's get you changed. Your combat skin is in the locker. Hunter? Is she dangerous? Determined. She'll turn the slum inside out to catch you. Not just to catch you. Typical brain rat. Barely outside and already working. Dylan? Dylan! This is for you, David. David. This memorial transfusion has a good chance of healing your husband, Mrs. Sedova. Shared happy memories have an extremely positive impact on patients. The syndrome that your husband suffers from is a classic excessive memorial deletions, acute dependency on stirring mnemonic triggers. I'm at risk of voting identity. In short, the inevitable shattering of already fragmented personality. Here, these endorphins should lubricate the process and help ease his receptivity to the transfusion. Come on, David. Remember us. Remember yourself. Memorial transfusion complete. <laughs> Don't worry. NMP is the best hospital for the treatment of memorial afflictions. Everything will be all right. With time. Yes. Of course. Ah, good. The initial results are encouraging. We need to schedule more treatments. A great deal more. It's an extremely expensive process. Continue, Dr. Quaid. I can cover his treatment. Your objective is to alter the scene so Dr. Quaid kills David Sadova instead of curing him. First step is to find memory glitches that you can interact with. Rotate the left stick backwards until you find a memory glitch. You can press right button to rewind faster. The 
You're approaching a memory glitch. Rotate it backwards slower and slower. And then hit the left stick? Or something. Something like that. Strap unlock. Boop. An MP is the best hospital for the treatment of memorial afflictions. Everything will be all right. With time. Yes. Of course. Ah, good. The initial results are encouraging. We need to schedule more treatments. Great deal more. It's an extremely expensive process. Continue, Dr. Quaid. I can cover his treatment. Only unlocking the strap was not enough to reach your objective. Find the right combination of memory glitches to make Dr. Quaid kill David. It's really cool how this works. Like if I stop rotating and goes zoop and then starts to play forwards and can do really slowly. It's very cool. Rewinding through the strap unlock memory glitch will cancel the interaction. Okay, but I do need to go further back, I think. Probably. You can track activated memory glitches at the bottom left of the screen. Memory. So, canceling that. Fast forward, what did I miss? This memorial transfusion has a good chance healing your husband, Mrs. Sadova. Shared happy memories have an extremely positive impact on patients. On patients. This legend suffers from the classic health and trick. Aggravated risk of floating entity. Aggravated risk of floating entity. Oh, that like glitch look. Showing us that there's something there. It shows up for just a second. Does it show up if I just play through normally, or do you have Yeah it does. Aggravated risk. You see that glitch if it plays through normally. So I don't like have to be going really slow to be able to see that glitch appear. I do have to be stopped on it though to get this to pop up. Aggravated risk of floating identity. Oh, hold on. I don't know if that's going to help anything, but it's something. Don't know if that's going to do anything either. i got to find the right combination. The right combination is probably not to do every single thing. Invert the memory of flux. I don't think this is a glitch to look because I can do something here. No. Stop him! Mrs. Sadova? Collapse of donor identity imminent. Dry skin of screams. Where is my face? It's impossible! Sever my flesh! Quarantine! Quarantine! So empty. So true. 
Inverting the memory transfusion has killed Olga. This is called a memory bug, as you can't remember that you're dead, can you? Yeah, I figure that wouldn't be the thing to do. Okay. Yep, get rid of that. Should lubricate the process and help ease his receptivity to the transfusion. Tachycardia. This is unusual. Doctor, what's wrong? He's a, he's a little flustered, that's all. Nothing to worry about. Uh, try to focus on peaceful memories. Oh, what's that? Anesthetic mask untie. Yeah. Come on, David. Remember us. Remember yourself. Child of the clouds, why do you crawl? What? The flies eat me. The flies take me. Oh. Strap unlock. Yes. Og eye? What is. What's Og eye? Scum. How is this possible? Oh, take my eyes. You'll no. be degenerate and die. Achievement unlocked medical malpractice. <laughs> yeah, that was a really fucked up thing to do, but of course we're doing it in self-defense. I'm... I'm not here to take you in. Do you still plan to take down Memorize? Yes. Then we share the same enemy. Well, there's a turnaround. I mean, a happy turn up. For everyone. I know Olga has her own reasons. Actually, just the one reason. The great Olga Sadova siding with the Errorist Revolution. There must be something in the water. Last time I took you in, you were young and quick on your feet. Just because you're not on my list doesn't make us drinking buddies. <laughs> Don't sweat it. I'll cancel the romantic weekend for two. But Nilan has a rendezvous with high society, and the route is alive with surveillance. Have you got any ideas? Oh, I got better than ideas. That's the Nilan I know. A magician. Nobody can turn heads quite like you. First you hit me, then you ruin my little business. You want a love-hate relationship, you got one. Whatever, we're wasting time. Thanks. Tommy, truly. You haven't lost it, sweetheart. Edge was right to bet it all on you. Everybody's counting on you!
My head may still be full of amnesia, but the risks Tommy and Edge have taken to free me have got me feeling troubled. Now they want me to punish Neo Paris's privileged few. Edge talks about a clandestine mission to be accomplished in the heart of the Saint Michel Comfortress, about a brutal wake up of this high security district, making it fertile for the seeds of revolution. And why not? Though his fight is legitimate, it's his friendship that has been clinging to my drifting thoughts. Why did our enemies erase my memory? Am I really that dangerous? In my chest, my throat, on the tips of my fingers, I can feel the throb of the power that scares them so. It scares me too. The power to take what someone is, their memories, and bend them to my will. To rewrite their history. To play God. The mere thought sends me reeling. If this ability really is the core of who I once was, then I must relearn what has been taken from me. I must master this talent. Welcome to San Michel District. Thank you for flying, Air Sedova. <laughs> Good hunting. I could do with a guide. No can do. Family business to take care of. Your first target's name is Carrie Sheridan. I need some confidential codes hidden in her memory. Who is she? The most famous architect in Neo Paris. Stored in her brain is every detail of every building she's designed. How do I find her? Your contact goes by the name of Bad Request. He's waiting on the last floor of the San Michel Rotunda. Well, I think this is a pretty good place to end the episode for now. Just want to say that Nilan is fucking rocking this outfit. It's like, it starts out at jeans at the top, then transitions into some like super future combat material, something. <laughs> I don't know. It's really cool. Like it's somehow both super casual and also super advanced. Yeah, I'm, I'm really, really enjoying it so far. I hope you have been too, and when we return, we're going to go after our target and try to get some plans for some buildings, which we're probably going to use to hit some other targets. <laughs>